Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching the videos. I want to cover this topic, not required, oh well, not requested I should say. Um, here's the deal, here's the deal. Um, the way this is posed in general is you may say something like, uh, we want to know the present value of an annuity where the payments begin with one and then they each subsequent payment increases by a factor of one plus k. Now in terms of a, um, a problem which is more precise, which actually has value, not in general, they may say something like the first payment or the first cash flow is one and the second cash flow increases by say 3% or some percentage uh, and etc. Each subsequent payment increases by some certain percentage. So it's equivalent to writing it this way where K will represent that percent uh, increase or possibly decrease actually. I'm going to change that to minus. Anyways, I digress. Uh, this is what's known as uh, an annuity with payments in geometric progression. Uh, so there is a formula for this and I'm bringing this up because there was a situation where I needed to know this and um, I had to come up with it on the fly. Now you might be saying, I mean, <clears throat> why would you have to do that? Let me just say that the problem was pretty complicated and uh, it was much more convenient to just have this formula. So let me go through it with you. I don't like to memorize a lot of things, but if I can derive them, it certainly helps me memorize them. Here's the deal. I want the present value uh, of these cash flows. Let's just do this the most basic way by definition. Well, I need to discount all of these. And again, I mean, I should probably be more specific. I want the present value assuming we live here in time zero, right? So discount everything to time zero, discount everything back to time zero. Uh, we do that by using uh, the discount factor V. So V, I don't even know if I should write those down, but I mean V is equal to one plus I to the negative one. I of course is the effective interest rate. So what I get for the present value is the following. Hopefully you see why this is V plus uh, 1 plus k uh, v squared plus all the way down to um, 1 plus k uh, to the n minus 2 v to the n minus 1 plus uh, 1 plus k to the n minus 1 v to the n. What I'll do to make this a little nicer is I'll factor out v. So this is equal to v uh, times 1 plus one plus k v to the one now plus all the way down let me skip some of these powers all the way to here which is going to be one plus k to the n minus one uh, and actually these are both the power let's write this way v uh, to the n minus one excellent excellent and so let me just say remark here real quick when I was doing these problems without the formula, I pretty much always do this. I always want to match um, the sort of geometric progression factors, one plus K, with the powers of V. This enables me to write this as a nice finite geometric sum, quite nice. Uh, this is equal to, now I still have the V, and then I have the following. Uh, remember, for a finite geometric sum, I need to do one minus the common ratio, one plus K uh, times V, all raised to the power, where the power represents how many terms you have. There are n terms. I'm not going to go through that argument. Watch some of my videos. There are n terms here to the n divided by 1 minus uh, 1 plus kv. We're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this. I want to write it in a nicer way. I'm going to multiply top and bottom uh, by 1 plus i. Absolutely legal. I mean, you can always multiply an expression by the number one. It leaves the expression unchanged. So this is number one. I've written it conveniently. When I do this, um, the top here, one plus i times v is one. So that's gone. And now in the numerator, or sorry, the numerator, that takes care of it, right? This one plus, one plus i cancels that v. That's in the numerator. It's like over one, right? Down below, I have something else. So this is going to be the following. This is one minus. Uh, what we have here is uh, one plus k v all to the n divided by now what is one plus i i'm going to distribute it through the denominator one plus i times v is gone one plus i times this is one plus i so this is one plus i minus one plus 
Okay. Let's use the definition of V and let's cancel some stuff down below. This is equal to one minus uh, one plus K divided by one plus I. There I've used the definition of V. V is one over one plus I divided by I minus K. This is what you want actually. Let me record, record my information. This is what we want. This is the formula you may want. As I mentioned, I had to derive this in an important situation. Let me just say that. During an important situation, hint, hint. I had to come up with that in an important situation. So let me record my thoughts because I want to expand upon this. There are various situations where things may change. Things may change. So let me write it over here. Uh, yeah, let me give myself some room here. So for n periods, for n payments, for n cash flows, n cash flows, and I'm going to write a case here for a second. In a second, so number one, we have this. We have the present value is equal to one minus one plus k over one plus i to the n divided by i minus k. Now, this is true when? This is true for i not equal to k, right? If i equals k, what happens? If i equals k, I get zero over zero. Is that zero? No. Is that one? No. What is that? Indeterminate. So, that's just my first case. This is my first case. But what if i equals k? What, so question, what if i equals k? What the hell do I do then? Is the present value then equal to zero over zero? This is indeterminate. You cannot just write that down and be like, oh, we're done. Indeterminate. So. What can I do? Well, let me use the, the definition again of the present value of these specific cash flows. Uh, so no, I mean, obviously this is no good. This is no good. So you may want to like do Lopi Tall's rule, but then again, what do you differentiate with respect to? Instead, I'll do the following. Uh, the cash flows are given by the following. Uh, the present value is equal to, we had this expression before. We had V uh, times one plus one plus K V all the way up to uh, one plus K V all raised to the n minus one, like that. Therefore, if, so, if k equals i, think about it for a second, if i equals k, what is this number? Well, this is one. Everything is one. Everything is one, and I've seen problems like this. I have seen problems uh, where the geometric sort of factor k corresponds, it coincides with the effective interest rate. So this is equal to, now how many do I have? I mean, obviously this is one as well. So how many do I have? I have, um, I'm adding one, I'm adding, I'm adding one to itself, add one to itself n times, n times. So what's one add to itself n times is n. So then the present value is equal to Vn. Vn, I mean, how nice. How nice is that? It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So that takes care of that. That takes care of that case. And that actually takes care of all the finite cases. So I want to continue with infinity because who doesn't like to play with infinity? So let's get rid of this. So we, let me record my, my information over there. So what would I have just discovered? Uh, item number two. Item number two is the following. Uh, the present value is equal to v times n if i equals k. So I'm hoping that you're distinguishing, that you're separating uh, these cases in your mind. It is quite nice, quite nice. What if our payments or in general our cash flows um, continue to infinity? So question, what if uh, our, what is wrong with my handwriting? Jeez Louise, what the hell happened to me? 
So what if our cash flows continue forever? Give yourself a second. There's only one case here, and it depends on the relationship between I and K. All right, all right, so we have the following. The present value is equal to the limit. Uh, we're taking, I mean, we don't have just N payments. We have an infinite number of payments, and payments continue forever, so N gets tends to infinity of this business, of the expression up top. I obviously can't do it here because that tends to infinity. So we know I equals K is out of the question. If I equals K, I mean, this diverges. This tends to infinity. But if I use this formulation here, uh, 1 minus 1 plus K divided by 1 plus I to the N divided by I minus K, I can say something here. Now, how well do you know math? Not even math. I mean, how well do you know the sort of the important aspects of a geometric sum? This is the common ratio. This is the common ratio. When does a geometric sum converge? It converges that the common ratio is less than, well, between negative one and one. So this is equal to, I mean, take n to infinity. This will tend to zero, and we'll get one over one, uh, i, i minus k. If, big if, big if. If, let me be uh, just mathematically precise, I don't even care about the, uh, the, the question. If the common ratio, which is this guy, if one uh, plus k divided by one plus i uh, is less uh, than, well, let me be a little, let me be precise here. The absolute value actually, the absolute value is less than one. Uh, for our purposes, for our purposes, what we need here so IE, IE, K is less than I. K is less than I, because think about it, in order for this to tend to zero, in order for this expression to tend to zero, this fraction, well, it must be a fraction. This must be a number less than one, which means K must be less than I. So there we have uh, item number three, item number three. So if we have uh, infinite cash flows, then we have what I just, uh, wrote down. So for infinite cash flows, we have that the present value is equal to 1 over i minus k as long as i, or I should say k, is less than i. So if, if that. And that actually uh, does it. So that takes care of all the possibilities. Let me say one other thing about this. This is also related to um, the theoretical price of a stock paying dividends. There's a formula for that as well. It's pretty much the same thing. It's, it's literally the same thing. As long as your first uh, a payment of a dividend, first dividend payment is one. So tell me what you think. I hope this was helpful.